September 19, 1906. It is generally admitted and statistics substantiated that in a storm, navigation is more dangerous on the Great Lakes than on the ocean. There is not space enough for safety, and the short waves and narrow channels require more skill than the broad sweep of the ocean. There is always a lee shore near, and vessels cannot run away from it as they can at sea. Wrecks, explosions, beachings, Collisions and founderings without number have marked the short but eventful history of navigation on the Great Lakes. It is an awful death list, 100 to 200 in a single season, that the beautiful Great Lakes have claimed as their prey. Is it any wonder that they have gained for themselves the reputation of being the most perilous body of water in the world? While the majority of the wrecks have been ordinary marine disasters, which have strewn the shores with the wreckage of a thousand vessels, resulting in millions of dollars of losses to their owners, there have been some wrecks that will never be forgotten, either because of the frightful loss of life or because they are still mysteries. Tales of boats that have simply dropped out of existence, bearing with them to oblivion their entire cargoes of humanity. From 200 to 400 vessels of all kinds are wrecked every year, says the Cleveland Plain Dealer. Of that number, perhaps one-fourth are total wrecks. The financial loss is always upward of a million dollars, and many years it approximates two million for the vessels alone. The losses to the cargoes are invariably half a million more. Every spring and every fall, the treacherous waters of Lake Erie wreck several vessels. Few of the huge modern carriers are ever wrecked by the fury of the storms alone, but scores of the old wooden freighters go down, many of them with all hands. The number of wrecks and the property loss has been steadily decreasing during the past few years, and there has not been a single disaster where more than a score of lives have been lost for more than a decade. One of the greatest marine disasters on the Great Lakes or anywhere else in the world was the loss of the Lady Elgin in Lake Michigan, September 8, 1860. She was struck by the schooner Augusta and sank in 20 minutes. She had on board 300 excursionists, 50 ordinary passengers, and a crew of 35 officers and men, a total of 385. Of these, only 98 were saved. The season of 1860, as regards the loss of life and property, was one of the most disastrous on record. The loss of property on the Great Lakes by disasters was 1,200,000 and 575 lives were sacrificed. During the terrific gale in November of that year, the propeller Dakota sank in Lake Erie off Sturgeon Point with all on board. August 9th was the 45th anniversary of the loss of the propeller Pulevic which was the most serious of the season of 1865 and one of the most famous wrecks on the lakes. The Puebic was run down by the propeller Meteor in Lake Huron, about six miles off the Thunder Bay Light. It was about 8.30 in the evening and twilight still lingered over the lake. The approaching vessels saw each other when miles apart. They kept their course until near each other when the Puebic put her helm a port and had just commenced to swing when she was struck in the vicinity of the pilot house by the meteor, cutting her down to the water's edge. A number of men were killed in the terrific crash, both vessels going at full speed. Confusion followed aboard both vessels. The Puebic had on board about 178 passengers. Many were below, but others were on deck to see the meteor pass. When it became evident that a collision was inevitable, they ran for safety to the aft part of the vessel. Before the vessels parted, people on the ill-fated Puebic jumped on board the Meteor. The boats were at once lowered, but within five minutes the Puebic went down. Many had thrown themselves overboard, and others were still below when the heavily laden vessel disappeared from sight. The boats of the Meteor were lowered, and many men, women, and children who were struggling in the water were saved. 
The meteor remained in the vicinity all night and in the morning signaled the propeller Mohawk, which came alongside and took the rescue passengers to Detroit. At the time, it was reported that the loss of life was about 70. In 1857, the freighter Merchant foundered in Lake Superior with all on board. Not even a piece of her wreckage was ever found. 25 years later, in 1872, the schooner Whitney foundered in Mid-Lake. Official records of the disaster simply state that she foundered mysteriously. Nothing is known of her except that she left port shipshape and was never heard from again. In both these instances, every soul aboard perished with the ship. A year later, the schooner Mollison met with a like fate. She was lost with all hands in Lake Superior. She foundered in the treacherous waters of the Great Lake. In 1879, the Juan Buna, a Canadian vessel, foundered in Georgian Bay. Thirty souls went down with her. None survived to tell the tale of the disaster. Two years before that, however, was a disappearance, a maritime enigma that is still more mysterious. In 1877, two boats, both in tow of a third, were lost by reason of the tow line parting. They vanished simultaneously. There was no collision. The historian remarks that their mysterious disappearance caused considerable discussion and no cause was ever found. In 1880, the crack passenger steamer Alpina disappeared in Lake Michigan. She was last seen about 30 miles off Chicago. Days afterwards, a few bits of wreckage were picked up along the shore of the lake. It was the last of the Alpina. Everyone on board had perished. There were 57 in all. No doubt an explanation exists as to the manner of her destruction, but those who know will never tell. The passenger steamer Asia, one of the finest on the lakes, perished in the same mysterious way in 1882. This was one of the most terrible tragedies ever enacted on the chain of lakes. More than 100 lives were lost. Two were saved after hours of terrible suffering in the icy water. They say the boat foundered. In 1883, the Manistee foundered in mid-lake on Superior. She is supposed to have been struck by a southwest gale. Some little wreckage, that is all that was found to tell the story. By the burning of the steamer G.P. Griffin, 20 miles east of Cleveland, June 17, 1850, 286 lives were lost. The steamer was about three miles from shore when she took fire. It was thought that the steamer could reach land, but she struck upon a sandbar half a mile offshore. The passengers became walled with despair, and a great number plunged into the water. Not a woman or child was saved except the barber's wife. In 1850, a collision occurred between the steamer Atlantic and the propeller Augsdenberg on Lake Erie, resulting in an estimated loss of life of 150 to 250, making it one of the most terrible disasters of lake history. The steamer ran across the bow of the propeller and was struck forward of her wheel. Soon after, the collision panic prevailed and many of the passengers and crew jumped overboard. The propeller kept on her course two miles or more when she rounded to and returned to the steamer. She rescued those who were still upon the wreck, but nearly all the others were drowned. One of the saddest of these mysteries is that of the passenger propeller Vernon, which disappeared on Lake Michigan in 1887, only 19 years ago. She was lost October 29th, and with her annihilation, 36 lives were blotted out. It is perhaps the most harrowing part of this calamity that sometime after her tragic end, the Superior sighted several life rafts to which clung a number of the sunken steamer's victims. These poor souls made frantic efforts to reach the Superior, and the Superior exhausted every possible means of reaching them. But the sea was running so high, and the gale blew so furiously, that all efforts at rescue failed. The superior was forced to leave the victims to their fate, and that is all that is known of the end of the Vernon. One of the most singular cases of vessel disappearance is that of the Hume, 
which an unknown fate overtook on May 21, 1891. Her disappearance is perhaps the strangest on record. She was a staunch, well-built, and perfectly equipped schooner, in charge of one of the best and most skillful navigators on the lakes, and was in first-class condition when she cleared from Chicago for Muskegon. The last scene of her was when she left the port of Chicago. Not a word or sign was ever received to explain her loss. She was totally obliterated, as completely blotted out as though she had never been. Not a man, not a spar, not enough wreckage to make a toothpick was ever seen of her afterwards. In this case, the Great Lakes historian does not even suggest that she foundered. Yet she is only one of scores of mighty ships that have vanished without leaving a record of their catastrophe. Many of the wrecks are mysterious and absolute, but it is known by tangible evidence that they were lost. Still others are enigmas. Nothing is known of them. Thus the schooner Atlanta went down in Lake Superior in 1891. Her entire crew went with her. A year later, the Nashua foundered in Lake Huron with 14 souls on board. In the former case, nothing was found to indicate the ship's fate. In the case of the Nashua, the disappearance was the same, only a few pieces of wreckage floated on the surface of the waters. In 1893, the Eddy met a similar fate. The manner of the loss of the Doughty about this time is still a mystery. She had a tow. The tow line parted, there came a gale, the ship sank. Easy to explain. The Great Lakes are generous with such explanations. Only a few years ago, the magnificent passenger steamer Chikara left St. Joseph, Michigan for Chicago on a wintry night. She was one of the finest, staunchest, and best equipped passenger boats on the lake. She sailed out into Lake Michigan and from there into oblivion. Not a word was ever heard, not a single token found which threw light on her total disappearance. The names of the Hudson, the Gilcher, and the Western Reserve are memorable in lake records. They are the names of the three disasters that were to herald a new era in Great Lakes navigation. They have been the last of the great wrecks, a fitting finale to the Great Lakes mysteries. The vessels were the first of the present modern type of lake boats. They were vast and deep, leviathans in every sense of the word. All three were lost. In each loss, there's a deep mystery. On Tuesday, August 30th, the new steel steamer Western Reserve, bound from Cleveland to two harbors, foundered during a fierce gale in Lake Superior, resulting in the drowning of six passengers and a crew of 25. The big steamer broke in two, the mainmast going by the board, and a weakening all other points well forward. She shipped water last, and the yawl boats were lowered. The crew and passengers got in the boats, but a few minutes later the steel hulk sank, capsizing one of the small boats. The other went to the assistance of those struggling in the water, but only succeeded in rescuing two of the unfortunates. This boat capsized shortly afterward, and one man, Harry W. Stewart, the wheelman, reached the shore. There have been many other casualties, but one of the most calamitous pages in the history of the Great Lakes was the disappearance of the steel steamer W.H. Gilcher on Lake Michigan in 1892. Captain L.H. Weeks, who was in command of the Gilcher, was a master of undoubted seamanship and had a capable crew of 16 all told none of whom escaped to verify any of the theories that were formed to account for her disappearance. The most acceptable view regarding the loss of the Gilcher is that she was in collision with the schooner Ostrich. The Ostrich was wrecked at the same time and as the wreckage from both boats was found on the beach within a radius of 100 feet. This theory is generally accepted. The crew of the Ostrich was also lost. This article appeared in the Evening Times, Grand Forks, North Dakota, September 19, 1906.
This is a Country Road production because history is fascinating.